um, a sucking insect that lives right on the shoreline in the sand on the margin of the sea. It's very tiny and uh, we've only sampled one shore so far and we, haven't, we have to go to another shore I think before we'll see it. Um, looking forward to finding that. Um, the other things that might be Narawin are probably uh, land snails and maybe some other things like moths that have, have arrived in Nauru um, and then through time they've evolved to, just be, to, to be quite special and unique to this place. The marine part of the BioRap is to look at Nauru's underwater biodiversity. With this team, hopefully we're going to be able to find out what sort of uh, biodiversity you have in your waters, and um, which we think has not been recorded before. The country is surrounded by a 20 to 200 metre wide coral reef. Though minor parts of the reef is affected from the phosphate industry, current studies shows that most areas of Nauru's reef is healthy. We found a um, soft coral specimen that we've seen and this is the first time that's been documented in Nauru and that's, it's like a hard coral but obviously it's called soft coral because it doesn't form the hard skeleton. We're going to do an analysis of how much biodiversity you have, how healthy it is and then make rec recommendations and suggestions. We've been working with uh, the group from fisheries who have been excellent uh, in terms of what would be the best way to manage the resource better to keep the reef healthy? Your reef is extremely healthy. In some areas, we're finding 100% coral cover with no disease or anything. So it, the reef's very, very healthy. And the one thing with anything native in the ocean, because the ocean's so big and it hasn't been exhaustively sampled, it's very hard to say off the bat if something's native or only found here. Um, there is a good chance that there is some endemism here or species only found here because you're isolated in the middle of the deep ocean. So we found a quite a bit of the one coral parites. Um, parites roost, there's extensive just total total 100% uh, cover of that, of that coral species. Uh, we found quite a bit of parietes and quite a bit of poslopore coral, which are your poslopore or your branching corals. It's very important to keep your habitats healthy and your native, the most important thing is keep your native species and your habitats and everything that lives in your water healthy. When you have healthy ecosystems, you get healthy people, you get a healthy reef because the coral provides a home for many of the fish you eat. It also provides um, um, protection from high wave energy which will be you know important during storms and that Nauru is so low it's not very high above sea level so it's very it's critical to a healthy island to keep your reef healthy. Nauru is said to have a low diversity of fish community mainly because the island as many have said seem to be very isolated. One of the interesting things about this place is that it's actually quite a low diversity fish community so there's a whole range of families that are actually missing from this spot and it's nothing to do with fishing or anything it's just that they're not they've never been here and so there's a whole range of species that are um, that feed on the plankton called apigonids they're only about this big uh, the other things that we're missing are a few other of the, the large um, sweet lips but we've been told that they're potentially in deeper water I suppose one of the most interesting things about this place is that it, it's really, really vibrant. The, the health of the coral is really high. So the, the really interesting thing about this place is that you seem to have a, just a really productive reef fish community. Although there's a high amount of fishing, there is a huge number of fish on your reef. We're seeing a lot of pelagic species, in other words the species that are in the water column. So the ones that aren't associated with the, bent, the, the, the reef, they're more um, swimming in, in the water. And there's just thousands, we see them. Um, we see a huge number of dolphins here as well. So it just seems like a really productive environment. And that's different than, than a lot of the places in the Pacific. 
um, that have had a lot more coral loss, habitat change, um, potentially development as well, um, which leads to much um, less healthy reefs and much less productivity in the reef. Some species of fishes are slowly decreasing as a result of overfishing in Nauru waters. Fishes that are not mature enough for reproduction are also caught. There is a lot of fish actually. There is a lot of uh, fish that eat the grass, so all the certain fish, uh, all the trigger fish, there is a lot of them. So that's good because there is, a, there is a good abundance of fish. But actually there is a lack of these predators, what we call predators, that fish that control all these fish, the grouper, the snapper, the, the emperor, there is a really lake of this type of, of fish and the what we we found in the water are quite small. That so that's that signs that show that yeah there is like a kind of overfishing on this kind of fish, like especially the groupers as I said, the snappers and uh, and this kind of fish. So like the reef are LC, there is a lot of fish but yeah, effectively there is signs of overfishing and the thing is that the fish, the groupers, the snappers and all these predators and the trevallies also control the reef and from now you have a lot of certain fish, a lot of trigger fish because these fish that control the reef are not here, are overfished. It will come a time where this balance will just switch it can be worse and it can change the whole uh, health of your reef. So maybe let them grow a bit more. Because what we see is that these small fish that you catch, they don't have the time to reproduce themselves because they are just babies. They are just juveniles, small fish. Some groupers need maybe two years before to be, be able to reproduce. Many marine invertebrates can be found along the coral reef, are collected by the team to be documented. So these are, uh, these are all invertebrates I'm looking at. Uh, well initially I was looking at targeted uh, commercial grain species for invertebrates, so sea cucumbers, uh, urchins and clams, but because uh, Nauru doesn't have uh, that many commercial viable species, Everyone, everyone helps each other on this expedition, whatever they see interesting, like this one. So we don't know what this one is yet, we've got to take, send this one away. Um, somebody's got a little hermit crab living in them, which is another invertebrate in there. And these guys, these invertebrates, they're, they're a very, very diverse group of organisms and very difficult to, uh, get, difficult to ID. And these are some of the other things we've got, um, including some sponges we still got to ID. But it's all interesting stuff. Nauru has a lot of interesting invertebrates. The marine scientists examined different areas of the island seascape and specimen to determine the condition on the reef. It's interesting things that I've found so far is that for the marine plants there's only like 40 species being reported. With the surveys that we're doing it's likely I've found some new records, some new species uh, that hasn't been reported from Nauru even a hundred species uh, but it, it requires a lot of work in terms of looking at the species and taking them to a, a laboratory and then we need to look under the microscope. Uh, Nara's flora, marine flora is unique, it's a lot of turf or a lot of tiny little uh, species uh, but they are unique because a lot of the, the fish, the fish that we eat, they rely on feeding on these little turf algae so it's got an important role so if we try and look at this and protect this we are also protecting uh, the, the fisheries that, that Nauru and also the rest of the Pacific rely on. There's also a great concern for some of the invasive species found on the reef like the fireworm. This is sited in the intertidal area near the Gabab channel. Other findings like barnacles, hydroids, ascidians and worms are the typical fouling organisms common on many man-made structures on the island. Yeah. These are man-made structures. 
and often these are in disturbed environment and these are where um, the new organisms that come from outside will land there and will, will, will inhabit that area, will live there. So one of the things that is of the interest is you can see these little things here. These are made by, by worms and these worms are often found on the side of ships. So they, they, they come in with, uh, on ships and they attach themselves and then when they get to places like here then they release and they come and form these these uh, spiral looking um, very hard things so after the 10-day survey scientists presented their findings in Nauru's biodiversity and ecosystem a positive response on the terrestrial overviews shows the landscape is gradually healing from reforestation a key example is the rich soil, forest and seabird ecosystem around us. Still, the ecosystem persists to survive under considerable stress of disturbance on its natural habitat. It can be saved.